We're getting ready to go live here shortly, and we're live right now. All right, thank you, JD. Uh, my name is Josh Hinton, the chairman of the Henry County Board of Education, and I would like to call our special call meeting, our virtual special call meeting uh, to order on April the 2nd, uh, 2020. Um, and before we get into the items, since this is our first virtual meeting, I would like to just go over a couple uh, procedures that I think uh, would make the meeting run more smoothly. And that is just for the board members since we are virtual, um, if you do have a question, please raise your hand and I will uh, try to call on whoever hand I see come up first um, and just make sure that I acknowledge you and give the microphone to you so we're not speaking over one another. Um, and just that, that's pretty much it. So uh, I think as long as we do that, we can carry on just like we normally do. So we'll just move on into our agenda, which is uh, our B, section B informational items. Uh, we'll B1 is, is a, a briefing of our from our superintendent on CO BD19 uh, and remote learning and business operations. So I will turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Davis, uh, to, uh, for B1. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board and our community in Henry County. I'd like to submit to you a briefing summarizing the last two weeks of instructional and operational continuity in the district. Um, at that time, after highlighting some of the components of these last two weeks, I will pause for discussion uh, with the board, and then I will resume a briefing in order to discuss moving our organization forward into the next two months, given the late breaking news uh, across the state of Georgia last night. But at this time, I would like to submit to the board a documentation of instructional and operational continuity that will be posted on our website and available for review. I need to begin this briefing by acknowledging that the Henry County Board of Education launched into a unified governance model that was centered around four core beliefs and commitments to our organization and our community. Our board members functioning with such unity, commitment to coordination and collaboration is the key to how the organization has transitioned into these unprecedented times with a level of unity, coordination, and collaboration that could only be done if we were governed by such a strong team of board members. I applaud you and I thank you for the strong and stable uh, focal point you have given us as a community of schools. We transitioned to remote learning on March 16th and uh, stood up remote operations for the organization. I'll begin with an update from each of our divisions and, and uh, the more details will be provided for you on our website. In our teaching and learning arena, we entered into remote learning with a framework for all teachers to follow, leveraging board adopted core resources, along with supplemental resources available at teacher fingertips. A new website called the Never Stop Learning website was enhanced from last summer's version of a Never Stop Learning website to provide standard aligned resources, instructional activities, and ideas for planning both for teachers and for families as we move to remote learning. We added in an additional distribution of printed K2 learning packets at each of our curbside meal delivery sites, at which time we were also able to donate or I'm, excuse me, deliver the donated scholastic education uh, books uh, to students at those curbside meal locations as well. 12,000 books were distributed from Scholastic and additionally, our local partner, Story on the Square, has provided an additional supplement of donated printed books that have been distributed for our students as well. The Henry County Schools healthcare science teachers donated all of the protective medical gear that has been in each of our classrooms and all of that donation went directly to Piedmont Henry. And after spring break, uh, the Henry County Schools will launch an Art of Hope digital art, music and writing exhibit along with the Henry Moves campaign to kick off family fitness and workout Wednesdays to keep our families connected. 
During this time, the role that our district issued Chromebook devices has played has been instrumental. And while we know there's some improvements to make as we come out of spring break, our access rate of students is currently at 96% overall with close to 46,000 student and teacher uses, users accessing our digital learning environment. While this is a, rare, a fairly remarkable rate of connectivity, we also recognize that not all engagement experiences have been perfect and we will be able to share how we'll recover any of the lost learning in, um, in coming months. Our operations for the organization have been ambitiously dedicated to a deep cleaning and disinfecting of every one of our school facilities. As of April 2nd, we have completed all 52 school campuses and all administrative buildings with a team of 15 to 20 custodial service partners and have done a deep cleaning and sanitization of every one of our school buses. At the same time, we have been able to continue with some of our ongoing construction projects, which includes the new Performing Arts Center in the Fairview community, as well as the multi-purpose facility additions to Eagles Landing High School, Hampton High School, and Stockbridge High School, as, long, as well as the multi-purpose and strings addition at Locust Grove High School. We have also been able to remotely monitor the utilities and conditions of each of our facilities and have been on call to handle any urgent matters uh, affecting the school campus. Our Family and Student Services D Division has been able to coordinate and organize more than 50 organizations and ministries to provide uh, services for our students, our families, and our community in a variety of ways. All of those services are available on our district website and may include food delivery for students who cannot access the curbside meal locations, transportation to the food sites, free laundry services, Wi-Fi hotspots, and access to food pantries. Additionally, we have had a dedicated care team to identifying students who are in homeless communities and providing them stable um, home options. Uh, furthermore, we are able to continue our lunch service over spring break thanks to the generous commitment of Operation Lunchbox and funding provided by the Chris Tucker Foundation. Additionally, we have been able to offer six locations for daily curbside meal pickup. Those six locations have included Hampton Middle School, Locust Grove Elementary School, McDonough Middle School, Oakland Elementary School, Stockbridge Middle School, and Wesley Lakes Elementary School. In just a short period of time, we have served nearly 30,000 meals to students at those six locations. Our finance division has prioritized the continuity of employee pay, and we have had a successful and complete March 31st, 2020 payday for all permanent employees. And the next pay date is scheduled to run um, as planned on April 30th of 2020. Principals and our school leadership team have certainly played a critical role in the uh, transition to remote learning and remote operations for the organization. Principals and assistant principals too are utilizing technology to conduct administrative leadership in team meetings, virtually visiting and observing teacher-led classes, and working to ensure all students are able to access the learning environment. Principals have continued to prepare for hiring for known vacancies for the next year and have done many, many virtual interviews and are prepared to make recommendations to continue to grow our teams. Additionally, every principal has assembled some type of student care team to partner with the support professionals in the, um, in the school, as well as with teachers and provide direct contact to parents of students who have not connected in to their remote learning. Our human resources division has conducted what we believe to be the first ever virtual recruitment job fair for teachers, where we had more than 305 applicants for certified vacancies. We are um, also well aware of the responsibility to continue our FMLA case processing, TRS submissions, and employment verifications and workers' compensation processing without disruption, and we have been capable of doing that. We are now monitoring all the federal modifications of FMLA that allow employees to take employer paid leave for COVID-19 related reasons and use FMLA issues for childcare. And we will continue to keep our employees updated on those options. 
Uh, most importantly for me to underscore is that Henry County Schools has a remarkable partnership for an employee assistance program. And we continue to encourage any of our employees and their families to reach out to our employee assistance program if there would be an opportunity to connect to a counselor or uh, meet additional needs. Uh, finally, I conclude by recognizing that in our chief of staff division, communications and public relations is at an all time requirement to do well. Between press releases, infinite campus messages, social media, and district and school websites, our communications team has worked around the clock to keep as current of information available to our community, our families, our students, and our employees. When we send an infinite campus message to families, it reaches more than 33,000 emails. And when we post something to social media, it is viewed more than 60,000 times. We have also started showcasing some of the spotlights that have occurred during this season. And we have a new feature called Remarkable Remote Learning Rockstars. And you can see lots of celebration around our employees on, uh, on social media. Finally, our legal compliance team in coordination with our board attorneys are well aware in tracking all of the federal and state waivers and adjustments to uh, end of year operating procedures and have been able to keep our practices and adjustments aligned with all of that. So Mr. Chair, at this time, that concludes my briefing related to the continuity of academic and operations uh, over the last two weeks. And I'd be happy to pause for any discussion of interest to the board before I continue into talking about the next two months. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, does any board member have any questions or comments for uh, Dr. Davis? Uh, Dr. Nutt? Thank you. Um, there, okay. It was a pleasure to be able to participate in the meals at the schools. I attended Locust Grove Elementary, and I believe we gave a gave out over 300 meals that day. And that was amazing. Um, the kids and the parents were so appreciative and it was just so nice to get to connect with them. And we let their parents know and the kids know that we the teachers miss them just as much as they miss us. And several of the kids said, well, can we come back tomorrow? And it's like, tomorrow's Saturday, that's okay. Can we come tomorrow? So our kids miss us just as much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Nutt. Uh, Mrs. Edwards? Uh, yes, I would just like to comment on the fact uh, regarding the lunches that were and the breakfast uh, meals that were prepared for the children. I attended one day at the um, at Stockbridge Middle School when the lunches were passed out and they were, the parents were so appreciative as they paroled, uh, patrolled through and the parents were yelling out of their windows, thank you all so much. Without this food, we don't know what we would have done. And even some of the kids had their laptops in their laps as they were getting the food. And the parents uh, made mention that they were, um, kids were working as she was driving. So I am so appreciative to the staff that uh, helped prepare and pass those lunches out because our community was so appreciative and they still are being, uh, we're still being, um, are being appreciated by them. And I'm just so glad that we were able to help in that way because it's very important for us to make sure that our community is we're meeting the needs of our community. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. Um, Ms. Cobb? Thank you for that update. I really appreciate that. I'm just really blown away by the number of people that we have, just all hands on deck, making sure that this is successful. And just to our teachers, oh my goodness, I have several friends who are teachers and they are just missing their kids and working so hard. And I just want to say a huge thank you to them and really just the whole school system. It really took a whole team to, to make this happen and continue to make that happen. So thank you to them. And um, same as Dr. Nudd and Mrs. Edwards said, um, the, the meal distribution at have She froze there for a second, uh, Mr. Hinton. So uh, we'll wait and- I'll come back to her. I'll come back to her. Ms. Pope, did you have anything? Yes, thank you so much. Um, I, I'm truly also just blown away. This That's is such a warm environment for us to, uh, for the students to feel welcome there. 
So just want to say a huge thank you to everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Cobb and everybody watching. Just bear with us because we do. We are in the arms of electronics and technology right now as uh, <laughs> we do this first virtual board meeting. Uh, Ms. Cobb, is that all you had? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Pope? Yes, um, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. This, this is also surreal, but I have just been in awe of the way our school system and our community have responded to this crisis that we found ourselves in. Um, the Dr. Davis and the cabinet and every employee in our school system is truly on board to make sure that our children still receive an exceptional education. Um, and beyond that, that they're fed and that they're active with this new Henry Moves campaign um, and they're still able to express themselves. So it is, it is so amazing and I could not be more proud to be a part of the school system right now. Um, so I'm, I'm really just so thankful. And I think the fact that we had 96% engagement is really remarkable. Um, I'm grateful that we have this one-on-one -on -one technology for our third graders and up. And um, I'm grateful for the extra effort that has been put forth to make sure that paper packets are available for those children who don't, do not have um, access at home to technology, the younger grades, the K through two. So thank you so much to our custodians and our food and nutrition, our HR department to ensure that we still have the best of the best teaching our kids um, next year when we are all back together again. So I'm just, I'm really grateful. And to our communications department, JD, y'all, I mean, you just, everything is so amazing. The communication has been very clear and prompt. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Pope. I can just say ditto to what Mrs. Pope said. She, I think she covered just about everybody, but I, I just want to uh, follow up and just say that I agree with all my colleagues and just uh, how wonderful um, or how, how beautifully like the Henry County organization has just taken control of this uh, disaster that's going on right now, not just for our community, but obviously across the nation and across the world. But um, in the beginning, I was thinking, man, we had to, you know, I was thinking, you know, everybody always says you got to reinvent the wheel. And I was thinking, you know, they didn't, you know, the staff didn't reinvent the wheel for this because nobody's ever planned for this. They had to invent the wheel. And I don't think Henry County, I think we announced uh, the schools closing for two weeks on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, Friday was a half day. And then Monday, the kids were uh, learning online, which is amazing. And I just want to say that um, I, I want to thank the staff. Some of them are around, some of them are not around. But for having the vision, what, four or five years ago, six years ago, maybe, to go one-to-one, -one, uh, I was lucky enough to be on the board back then uh, to be able to vote on that. Um, and we were looked at funny by some, but, uh, but I'm, I'm glad we did it, and especially, especially now. But I just want to thank, not going to go thank individual departments, but I just literally want to thank and praise our entire uh, school system and from, e I mean, everybody involved, because honestly, it's taken every single person to pull off this in every single department. So I just uh, give yourself a pat on the back. And as a board member, uh, knowing that such, uh, you know, that, that the school system is made up of such great employees, it just, for me, and I know the other board members, like it just makes our job so much easier knowing that we have, uh, not only the right people at the helm, but I mean, people just that are so dedicated to their job uh, and dedicated to our community. So I just wanna thank everybody for that. Um, and I think everybody has had a chance to speak. So I will now turn it back over to Dr. Davis for her uh, second half of her B1 briefing. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Um, we actually did compile some images that reflect many of the things you all just spoke to. Um, of course, this was compiled before our physical distancing was uh, a part of the shelter in place ordinance and some of the requirements um, that have increased over the past week. But uh, if I could ask Mr. Hardin to take a moment and share those images, I think it captures the culture of our community and reflects the commitment of our, of just our, our 
our team. And, um, and so Mr. Hardin, can I pass it to you? Just one second as I pull that video up. Is that video showing on your screen currently? Okay, just one second. Pull it up here in just one second. It's wanting to fight me right now, so bear with me. It's it's spinning. Well, JD, we can move on and we can share that at the end of our meeting. Okay, it's pulling up right now. Okay, well, we'll give it one more minute then. All right. Well, while we're waiting for this to play, the, the video is actually available online. So is it showing now for you? Not quite yet. Not showing, but I think we can hear it. That's true. But, but if you want to, um, Dr. Yep. Davis, do you want to just kind of, you want to see if JD can, um, figure it yeah. out and show it at the end. We gotta have a, this is a love hate relationship with technology. <laughs> yeah, for That's sure. Perfect. So let's go ahead and continue in um, just this briefing. And uh, I think what really the video captures is a commitment to kids and a commitment to families and our board member setting the tone for that. Um, and so I think it's really uh, would be great if you could go to the website to view that and just really share in the emotional part of um, and this important work we're doing. But it is with both heartbreak and hope that I want to now talk about our next two months together as a community of schools. Of course, the decision that was late breaking by the um, governor last uh, yesterday uh, certainly elevated a new level of questions and we are urgently committed to producing guidance and recommendations and clarity to close out a good school year. Um, and so I, I wanted to give a few of those specific details and also where to find information as it is finalized. Um, so first of all, um, due to the evolving directives, Henry County Schools will make uh, adjustments to address essential operations and essential personnel and contribute to the responsibility we have of keeping our employees and our community safe. First, our food and nutrition services over spring break will continue at the current six Henry County sites, Locust Grove Elementary, McDonough Middle, Stockbridge Middle, Hampton Middle, Oakland Elementary and Wesley Lakes Elementary and be provided by Operation Lunchbox and financially sponsored by the Chris Tucker Foundation. Upon the conclusion of spring break, Henry County Schools will resume the curbside pickup meal locations at the same six locations, but we will move to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday service model. On Monday and Wednesday, every child in the car will receive two breakfasts and two lunches, and on Friday there will be the one breakfast and the one lunch for that day. This will allow us to keep our families off the road a little bit more and also keep our employees at home a little bit more. Additionally, in compliance with the definition of essential employees determined by the Department of Homeland Security and in alignment with the governor's executive order and the Henry County Board of Commissioners shelter in place ordinance, 
essential employees for the purpose of continuing remote learning, preparing and distributing student meals, performing critical functions for the operations of the organization, and ensuring the safety and security of our students and school campuses have been identified. Employees have been or will be shortly notified by their supervisor, provided a letter of verification, and be limited to the location in the building and the duties that are allowable during their time. Physical distancing will be required and monitored at all times. The fourth thing is that we will move to an essential spending only period for local and school district purchasing with the exceptions of necessary expenditures to maintain and improve remote learning, necessary expenditures for the purchase of food for student meal preparation, necessary expenditures to maintain current operations for the local schools and the district, and emergency expenditures only. The fifth item is the technology and repair and replacement for students in grades three through 12. First of all, I too need to give credit to the Henry County community and the support of the SPLOS 5 referendum placed before the voters uh, many years ago. I also need to credit Dr. Pam Nutt as chair of the Board of Education at that time and Mr. Rodney Bowler as the superintendent for purchasing 38,000 student Chromebook devices that have been instrumental in making this transition. However, we know students have had interruption to their experience through their Chromebook and we are going to have an opportunity to report the disruption and receive a replacement device as we come out of spring break. We will communicate how to do that through our Infinite Campus Messenger as well, as well as on our website. Number six, academic standing, such as final grades and all associated matters like class rank and transcripts and promotion and retention. On March 30th, the Georgia Department of Education provided guidance for school districts on how to handle these matters. The district will very shortly be prepared to provide a consistent approach to the fourth quarter grading, the end of year grading practices, and all the associated academic matters. This will include class rank clarification for seniors, final GPAs for seniors, promotion and retention decisions, summer learning recovery options, and August adjustments for students with learning gaps. This will all be communicated through our Infinite Campus Messenger and on our district website and we are moving quickly to have that guidance available for our community in very short order. Number seven is the rescheduling scenarios for our end of year traditions, activities, and events. Henry County Schools has not considered the cancellation completely of end of year activities, and we are developing several postponement scenarios that are now, uh, that now that we have been directed to close schools for the continuation of the year but we too value the memorable moments that accompany learning and we are committed to preserving and protecting them at a later date to the extent officials deem them safe to do so. And while I am saddened that our April and May moments may not look exactly how we plan them out to be, I am optimistic that we will actually experience a new value and cherish what adjustments we are able to pull off together. Rescheduling and post moment will be communicated very shortly using Infinite Campus and the district website, along with local school websites and local school communication channels. And number eight, finally, the news that school will not resume normal operations for the remainder of the year has most certainly raised a new level of questions for our employees, our families, students, and our community. And while we prepared to be apart for two weeks, we need to know that two and a half months is a very different circumstance. I know families are wondering about gathering personal belongings and things that are in lockers, returning school issued items, securing refunds for events that have been canceled, along with many, many myriad of other questions. I was actually able to meet with my student advisory, my teacher advisory, and my parent advisory this week and their insight has been incredibly valuable in compiling our next phase of frequently asked questions that will be made available also in very short order as we begin to navigate those closing out procedures. I will also commit that this is communicated through Infinite Campus and on our district website. 
So Mr. Chair, at this time, that concludes the second portion of my report for informational item B1, but I remain available for any discussion. Thank, thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, does any board member have any uh, questions or comments for uh, Dr. Davis? Ms. Cobb? Yes, I um, am especially thankful that um, the postponement of things is being considered instead of canceling. And I specifically I want to thank you on behalf of the senior class. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to get emotional. Um, the senior class, we're so grateful that that decision is being made. And I've heard from so many people who are so thankful that, um, you know, of course, we do have to follow guidelines. We all realize that, but that that is being considered uh, graduations and all those important things that these kids have been looking so forward to. We're just so grateful that they are planned to be postponed and not canceled. So I just wanted to personally thank you for that. Thank you, Mrs. Cobb. Thank you, Mrs. Cobb. Any uh, other questions or Ms. Dr. Nutt? Um, the same thing. I've had a lot of parents, uh, especially upset, well, distraught mothers that have had their children going through Henry County Schools for 12 years and then all of a sudden be told, hey, we're sorry. Um, you know, this is out of our control. And I just, I want them to know that our superintendent and the staff is doing everything they possibly can do. Um, a lot of this depends on the circumstances going down the road, but to be able to tell them, hey, we're going to do something. It may not be the greatest situation, but we want to recognize our children for the accomplishments that they've done for the past 12 years here in Henry County High, um, Henry County Schools. So thank you very much for considering our parents and our children because it means a lot to our community and not to just do a blanket, no, we can't do this. So thank you very much for considering all of that. Thank you, Dr. Nutt. Um, Mrs. Pope? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, I know that this is such an emotional time for all of our families, especially the families of our seniors. Um, but I, I just want to echo my colleagues and say thank you for being so compassionate during this time and thinking about those special moments that they've looked forward to for the last 12 years um, and just ensuring that there's a special closure for this season of their life. And, you know, to our community and our, our seniors and our, all of our students just know that we are thinking about you and our hearts are heavy for you during this time. But I also wanna just say a special thanks again to those uh, community partners for Operation Lunchbox and the Chris Tucker Foundation for stepping up and making sure that our kids are fed during spring break. That is priceless and we are so grateful for that partnership. So thank you and thank you for um, Dr. Davis for continuing to meet with your advisories and ensuring that our community still has a voice during this time. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Pope. Mrs. Edwards? Yes, I would just like to mimic what everyone else has said because I've been receiving phone calls from grandparents and parents as well. And they're all concerned about what's gonna be happening regarding the graduation ceremonies. And I think this will give them some relief, Dr. Davis and, the, and board members that there will be, hopefully we will be <clears throat> able to have some type of activity for them. Because, you know, after all, we've all been there and we can all identify with what this year could look like for them if there's no graduation ceremonies at all, because they've worked, worked so hard for 12 years. And I'm just so thankful that we are considering um, having some type of a ceremony for them. Don't know when, can't say when, can't say, you know, because we just don't know either. Uh, it just depends on, you know, how this uncertainty plays out. But I'm just so glad that the parents, when they see this video or get the email uh, on Infinite, Cam Infinite Campus, they will feel some gratefulness or gratitude to the board and Dr. Davis for making this decision to make this happen for their students and their children. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. And I hate to be repetitive, but 90% of the phone calls, texts, and emails that I've gotten are about graduation. So like Dr. Nutt said, 
obviously, I mean, you know, we have to be optimistic. We're two months away from our traditional graduation. Hopefully, hopefully uh, things improve for many, many reasons, um, graduation being one of them. But uh, I, I do th want to say, um, you know, from my voice on the board, and I know you just heard from my colleagues, the superintendent, Henry County uh, wants to celebrate our seniors in some way. Uh, do we know how that looks? Absolutely not. Like Ms. Edwards said, do we know when that can happen? Absolutely not. But it is um, our full intention to celebrate uh, our seniors in some way. Uh, and hopefully it'll be a very special way. So um, Dr. Davis, would you, did you have any kind of wrap up comments for uh, B1? I would only add that um, the unity of the board continues to reveal itself and is what allows us to be uh, moving so quickly towards final recommendations and guidance. Um, there's also special moments in many of our transition years and really every grade's promotion, but those kindergartners and fifth graders moving to middle school and eighth graders moving to high school, we have uh, plans to share contingency ways to celebrate those sweet moments and uh, make sure that that handoff is special uh, for all students. Um, and we even uh, had a lot of students asking me questions about uh, yearbooks and um, the opportunity to get back together with their class. And uh, none of that is lost on our planning. Uh, it's very serious to do the business operations and it is equally as serious to think about the experience our students have. And so I just thank you for operating in such unity that allows us to focus um, on both of those as priorities. So Mr. Chair, that does conclude what I have prepared for informational item B1. All right, Do, uh, Dr. Nutt, did you have a question or comment on B1? A comment for uh, Dr. Davis. Um, when I graduated from Henry County High School in 1970, hmm, um, it was the only year that we did not have a yearbook since 1934, I believe, 35. And so that's kind of, that's always stuck with my class because we didn't have a yearbook. Our senior pictures were in the back of the 1978 yearbook. Um, so, and there's no, I don't know the reason why we didn't have one, but we didn't have one. So from somebody who did not get one, you know, this is important. And I'd hate to know that any of our kids missed out on the senior experience. Thank you, Dr. Nutt, and thank you, Dr. Davis, for your uh, briefing uh, on everything you just shared. We will now move into the next section of the agenda, which is our business items uh, for this afternoon, which means we will be taking action on them uh, as we discuss them. Uh, and we will start with C1, a resolution to approve the contingency operations for Henry County Schools. Dr. Davis. Mr. Chair, members of the board, I present for your review and consideration an emergency resolution and declaration to adopt contingency operations for Henry County Schools. Let me first begin by saying that the core business of Henry County Schools, even during this unprecedented time, has remained student learning. I am proud of the commitment of our team of employees to our children, our relationships with our kids, and our belief that learning matters. That being said, we are cognizant of the operations of the district operating under a state of emergency and consider it prudent to be prepared for contingency operations. Items that are addressed in the resolution are the State Board of Education policy and rule waivers that have been adopted by the state of Georgia. The local Henry County Board of Education policy waivers necessary to adjust the identification of essential employees and alternative work duties, and emergency contingency planning. The details of the resolution have been posted to the district website as part of today's agenda. I do wanna note that the version of the resolution posted yesterday with the agenda has been replaced with an updated version that acknowledges Governor Kemp's executive order that was released after our original version was posted. Mr. Chair, that does conclude what I have prepared, but I remain available for any discussion.
Uh, thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, do I, uh, you heard the recommendation from the superintendent um, to approve C1. Uh, do I have a motion to approve C1? I have a motion for Mrs. Edwards. Is there a second? All right, uh, second from Dr. Nutt. Um, so I have a motion to second on the floor. Is there any discussion on C1? All right, all in favor, please uh, raise your hands in front of the screen. All right, the uh, C1 carries uh, unanimously 5-0. Uh, and now we will move to uh, item C2, one-time emergency pay supplement, uh, Dr. Davis. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I present for your review and consideration a recommendation to allocate $1.2 million out of the general fund to provide a one-time pay supplement of $200 per permanent employee. Mr. Chair, that concludes what I have prepared, but I remain available for any discussion. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, You've heard the recommendation uh, from the superintendent to approve C2. Do I have a motion? I have a motion from Ms. Cobb. Is there a second? Uh, a second from Mrs. Pope. Um, is there any discussion? Any board member have any questions or comments on C2? Mrs. Edwards? Uh, yes, Dr. Davis, on yesterday, we had a discussion regarding the uh, $1.2 million one time, um, and I've lost, I've lost pay my supplement. pay supplement, thank you, one time pay supplement to all the employees, and we just discussed um, what has, what has the savings been so far since we've been out of uh, school with, say, on, in terms of fuel, um, food to purchase for the cafeterias. So could you uh, tell the board or alert the board as to what that savings has been since we have been, the students have been out of school? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Edwards. So um, we are able to realize some uh, expenditures that are now not requiring uh, actual expenses. And uh, however, we're also, uh, we are providing food without any uh, revenue from um, a food program. So there is an offset there, but we are in total anticipating approximately 1.6 million less dollars spent in the 45 days of remote learning and remote operations. Coupled with the underspending pace of 2%, we have already been on in the FY20 school year. We are near now a 2.5% underspending rate for FY20. I will add to that, we are conscious of planning FY21 right now. And so that has to be taken into consideration when evaluating our underspending as well. Ms. Edwards is on mute. There you go. Thank you. Um, as we discussed on yesterday, my concern was not to go into our reserve. And I'm glad to hear that um, the spending 1.2 for the um, for the employees one-time uh, pay would be um, would not we would not have to go into our reserves. So I'm glad to know that um, one will offset the other. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. Uh, does any other uh, board member have any questions or comments on C2? I, do, I have a question, Dr. Davis, that I've uh, had a couple people ask, and can you just elaborate a little bit on the job families that are continuing to get a paycheck right now? Sure. So all permanent employees are continuing to get a paycheck. I mean, that's going to include, you know, our teachers, our certified professionals, our school leaders. It's also going to include our bus drivers and clinic aides and bookkeepers and front office professionals and paraprofessionals. And we have 86 job families, so I don't, in, you know, I don't want to leave any name of a job family out. Um, the only uh, instances uh, for is for substitute teachers and ASEP employees who are now not working in those um, a, a temporary roles. Um, but everybody else is receiving a, a paycheck. Okay, thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, any other questions or comments on C2? Mrs. Edwards. Um, Dr. Davis, I just want to make sure I understand. So there are some substitute teachers that are still on payroll? 
Yes, yeah, substitute teachers who are filling a permanent substitute role uh, that might be for a uh, maternity leave or another FMLA leave who are actually providing instruction and in continuing to work uh, are continuing to stay on payroll. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Any, uh, any additional questions on C2? Dr. Nutt? It's not really a question, it's a comment. It's one that I made last month. Um, you notice that one of our families, and I still consider them our family, was our custodians that are with um, the company. Um, and if we can just look at that later on when all this craziness has settled down, if there's any way to bring them back into our family permanently, um, I think that's it's just good business. And, and they are, they are part of our family. I want them to know that. Thank you, Dr. Nutt. All right, any additional questions on C2? All right, I don't see any hands. We have a motion and we already have a second on the floor. So all in favor, please raise your hand. All right, uh, five, five, five oh. All right, now we will move to our next section of the agenda, which is a, an executive session. Um, do I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of personnel? I have a motion from Dr. Nutt. Do I have a second? From, a second from Mrs. Edwards. Uh, all in favor of going, to, going into uh, an exe executive session for uh, personnel, please raise your hand. All right, we're now in executive session and we'll return afterwards. Thank you.
Mary Elizabeth, can you hear me? Yes, I can, but it's I can't not, see you. Yeah, it's so not. It's not letting me start. It's not letting me show it. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Perfect. Impatient. And we'll just wait for JD to transition the screen and then we'll be able to turn it over to you, Mr. Hinn. And he'll tell us when we're live again? Yes. Well, we are live. Uh -huh. Okay, JD, if you give us a thumbs up, I'll turn it over to the chair. Okay, Mr. Chair, we're ready to resume. All right, thank you. Um, board members, you have, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Do, do I have a motion to uh, come out of executive session? Uh, I have a motion by Mrs. Pope and a second by Dr. Nutt. Uh, all in favor of coming out of executive session, please raise your hand. All right, we're now out of executive session. Um, do, uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, personnel presented by the superintendent in executive session? And for some reason, I can't see everybody. Mr. Chair, you had a motion from Mrs. Cobb. Okay, there's a motion from Mrs. Cobb. Is there a second? You have a second from Mrs. Edwards. Thank you, Mrs. Pearson. So we have a motion by Ms. Cobb and a second by Mrs. Edwards to approve the personnel presented in an executive session. Is there any discussion? There is no discussion, Mr. Hinton. Thank you, Ms. Pearson. Uh, all in favor of approving the personnel presented, uh, please raise your hand. Each board member has voted in favor. All right. Um, the personnel is approved unanimously. And with that, that is all the business we have before the board today. So I will uh, adjourn our special call meeting on April 2nd. I appreciate everybody uh, in attendance. Y'all have a good afternoon and stay safe.